Well, hi. It's shop time again, and I have another distraction to share with you. So over the holidays, I was getting a little bit antsy, and I promise I do have a Mustang update coming for you very shortly. Um, but I, we, we got a really nice dumping of snow, and I just did not have a plane to fly off of snow. It's so much fun to do that, and so I, I've got the skills, I've got the materials, I had a whole bunch of spare parts laying around the shop, and so I built this in about four days. Let me go over some of the specifications. So this is a Seamaster 2. Uh, these are, the, the plans for this are from a 1983-84 uh, edition of RC Modeler. The Seamaster 2 calls for a 15 to 30 size motor. I am using a Tacon Bigfoot uh, 25 motor. It's uh, 870 kV. I'm swinging a 9.9 prop because it's what I had. A 9.6 would probably do just fine. Some random 40 amp ESC that I have and I'm running a 3 cell 2200 pack. Uh, I've got a couple of different packs from different makes but they all seem to weigh about the same and perform the same. Um, <laughs> That, that is to say that I've had this airplane out a couple times before it uh, was covered and after it has been covered. And the cool thing is that today when I flew it for the first time when it was covered, I figured why not just try to go for how long I can fly this for. 15 minutes. <laughs> I was able to fly it for 15 minutes. So the cool thing is that it can go slow, it can go a little bit fast, so you can fly it a little bit sportier if you'd like but you can practice touch and goes all day long. This airplane is so super smooth to fly. It doesn't have a tremendous amount of roll rate. Uh, the elevator authority is perfect. And I, honestly, there's, there's no throw. It's all 100% throws. Um, no programming on the radio. Um, I mean, I've set up different holes on, on the control horns, but I mean, it's all pretty simple. Um, so let me tell you about the construction and then I'll tell you about the covering. So the construction of this airplane is sort of like a hybrid. Some people may call it a composite. Uh, depends on what your def definition of composite would be. Um, so what I mean by composite is uh, this isn't just foam. This isn't just wood. This is foam and wood and to be clear there is no carbon fiber there's no fiberglass there's nothing truly hard or difficult about this build maybe if you count the mechanical soldering i did for these struts okay but what we're talking uh flag markers you know like um, yard flags that you get at the hardware store it's just a steel rod with a little plastic flag on it and electrical ring terminals that's it. I used a butane torch and, and, and uh, metal work solder. That's, that's all I did there. Not particularly difficult. Got a couple screws. Um, the, uh, the pod for the motor is completely empty. Uh, as you can see, I'm running the motor wires down the side of the standoff for the motor. Um, and that is wood. Uh, the wood, the formers that hold the, the plywood in place for the motor standoff, that is all plywood. But most everything else is uh, foam. Um, uh, the wings are almost entirely foam with exception of the leading edge and the wing tips and the ailerons and trailing edge stock at the root. That's all the balls. Now, again, I had all of this stuff on hand. Uh, the horizontal stabilizer, that is also balsa. The top and the bottom of the aft end of the fuselage, those are balsa sheet as well. The front, the, uh, the top is balsa. The bottom is 164th inch ply. Again, materials I had laying around. 
Uh, some triangle stock, again, more that I just had laying around. I didn't even use the right size that the plans instructions called for. I just used what I had. And man, I'll tell you, this airplane is so much fun to fly. It's so smooth, it's beautiful to fly. It's not a handful at all. And I'm really, really pleased. Now, the wings, I used the construction method that I outlined last year. And you can see a link up above on how to do that. Super easy. I knocked out the wing assembly and construction in one afternoon. That's like two, three hours of work. Super easy. And I couldn't be happier because it seemed like the, the hardest part of the build was actually the fuselage uh, just because the wings were so dead easy. Um, from there, uh, you know, it's, it's just figuring out and sizing things that it's about accounting for the thickness of the foam where you're going to use it and then factoring in what you need to be strong. So I used balsa and plyo on the top and bottom just to manage the torsional, uh, the twisting of the fuselage, especially because you've got a fuselage uh, pod for the motor that's elevated above. I didn't want this twisting moment to translate into the fuselage and have things twist. So that's why I used a little more wood. Uh, I probably could have gotten away with less and used more foam, but I had everything that I needed to do that, so I figured why not. Um, I primarily used Gorilla Glue. Um, in fact, I only used Gorilla Glue. <laughs> uh, I used the white Gorilla Glue, uh, and uh, I also used CA glue for like quick things like this, the balsa. The balsa to balsa bonds. Uh, everything else I used, uh, the white Gorilla Glue. So managing my time in terms of factoring about half hour to an hour for glue cure times, uh, that became an issue as well. But you know, that's all part of, of the challenge of speed building, I guess. Now the covering on this was something that was a bit of unknown. Uh, my good buddy Carl, uh, Carl Leidick, I love how Carl has approached covering foam with standard film coverings. It's just fantastic what he's done. And I consulted with him and the work that he had done and I don't know. I, I am just excited to share this with you. So Carl had this method down pat. I mean, it was just flawless. And he used a, a coat of, of Super 77 spray on the, on the covering as well as on the model. And then he would tack it down and then use a, a, a heating iron to, to apply. I didn't use the glue at all. I just used the covering straight up. I did a couple of test patches. I've got various coverings from Hobby King, uh, Tower, from uh, Horizon, a whole bunch of different brands and textures and the way they shrink and things like that. I did test patches with the checkered pattern because sometimes color can affect how much how heat is absorbed and whatnot. So the test pattern showed that all I really needed was 280 degrees Fahrenheit on my covering iron. That's it. Covering it was pretty much like covering any other model. You start from the center, working outward, um, just tacking down edges, and then uh, using the, the main part of the iron or even a, a, a heat gun. That's the word, a heat gun. <laughs> <laughs> using a heat gun to shrink the covering. I opted to just use the covering iron itself because especially with all these surfaces, I wanted to make sure that the covering was stuck directly to the surface. And that meant heating up the surface too. Now, I did not see any major warping or sintering or complete globular melting of foam at this temperature. And I even rubbed the iron directly on the foam just to test it to see what it did. It melted it a little bit, but mostly it just made it shiny. It was no big deal. No big deal at all. Such fantastic results. Um, with that, I just went to town and covered everything. And the bottom, you cannot mistake which side is the bottom and which side is the top. Um, you'd have to be dead blind, uh, dead and blind to know, to not know what way was up and what way was down. But that said, I mean, 
Occasionally you do get a an air bubble, okay? So an air bubble is super easy fix. You take the very tip of your razor blade and just tap a teeny, 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 tiny hole, as small as you can make it, and then you use the, the covering iron to cover toward the hole, all the way around it, and then you hit the, the hole last. Any kind of bubble, easily cleared up with that. If any bubbles do appear on this model from being in the sun, I can fix it the exact same way. I'm not anticipating it as this is likely to be a more winter flying uh, airplane for me. I do not have an area that I can go float fly at. Uh, places like ponds and stuff are surrounded by homes where I live. So it's, uh, it's a snow flyer only for me unless I take it to an event. So we'll see. Um, the, <laughs> the, the wing tip are uh, actually held on with uh, Velcro. So I used my, uh, it's like a scroll saw kind of hot wire and was able to use the one inch thick pink insulation foam and just hot wire cut these and then cover them the exact same way um, with the iron on covering. But they're held on with Velcro of all things. So if these get dinged up or mashed up or bent or banged or whatever, these are disposable. I can easily cut a new piece of Velcro, a new uh, tip float or whatever. It's not a huge deal. Um, other than that, you know, the, the vast majority of this is dollar store foam um, or flight test foam I, is actually what I use. I use the flight test foam because I have a box of it here in my shop. But it's, you take the paper off it take the paper off both sides and it cuts great. You can just score it, bend it, and it'll just crack. And then you can, you don't even have to cut all the way through, just score it and crack it and you're good to go. Unless you've got a curve that you cut into it. I mean, it's so forgiving, so easy. And if you have a part that you mess up, you really don't care. You really don't care. Four days, four days to build this Seamaster 2. I'm so excited. That thing hand launch is beautiful. Imagine what it'll do when it goes off the ground. All white, it's hard to see, Josh. You know what? I'm tired of your complaining, Brad. <laughs> I've lost you. There you are. I just want to make sure my comments get caught on the video. <laughs> hey, going on Facebook. Anything Sir game on Facebook, right? These retracts. <laughs> Should be glow powered. <laughs> Gas. Should have been a helicopter. I mean, it's so fun to play with the rudder on those turns, too. It's super docile. Is this a Josh Archer design? Or is this oh, no, this was from RC Modeler. Uh, RC Modeler plans, uh, 1972, I oh, think. Oh, wow. 74, Seamaster 2. So there was the Seamaster, and then there was, like, the Seamaster XL, and so the original Seamaster was small, and the Seamaster 2 was like a 60 size. It was a big sucker. And then so the Seamaster 2 that they released is more for like uh, 15 to 30 size. I had a 40 size glow. I think it was a Seamaster. Uh, but it was, a, uh, it was an R kind of kit. Gotcha. It had the big pot up on top of the glow engine. Mm -hmm. Off the lake. Had a couple of good flights on it until I lost contact with the radio. <laughs> oh, no. the lake and it was all over the lake. <laughs> Sounds like a sea story to me. Not a lake story. A lake story? <laughs> <laughs> From a submariner? Yeah. <laughs> That's no throttle. Keep the nose up, see how it keeps going. Not yeah. this low. I still think I have just a touch, three clicks of right aileron. That's all I've given the trim. Right out of the gate, it's doing nothing. Okay, so now I'm throttle off. 
I'm gonna try hold my elevator. That's all the way. Whoa! Nice stall. <laughs> <laughs> Did it stall to the right? Yeah. Big time. And quickly. Yep. Like no warning. I mean, there's a little bit, but it's it's quite abrupt. You're on three minutes. All right. Flight timer says a little over two. That's because I've been doing throttle offs, probably. Whee! Little pocket of air. With that uh, engine on that big long lever like that, too, you're going to see a lot more torque effect from the yeah. engine rotation. And that's probably driving part of your. My, my your ground handling? Issue. Yeah. No, the aileron issue. Oh, the aileron. Oh, that's a good point. You might want to, you may have to you think about doing a little aileron throttle mix. I'm gonna land, gonna land, gonna land, gonna land, gonna land. Whoop, no, gonna <laughs> down. I was trying to. You know, the problem is that I just- now and glide all the way back. Yeah, I did, okay, I'll throttle off now. I built the airplane too dang light, Brad. It's, it's a real problem. Watch the tree. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Sweet! I hope that you guys have enjoyed seeing this little update. This is my last airplane of 2020 that I have built. This is airplane number nine that I have built this year. <laughs> Uh, I have not covered all of my builds on the channel. A couple of builds uh, I have kept to myself just for therapy. Uh, first and foremost, I am a builder. I am not a videographer. I am not a video producer. Uh, I love to share what I know, and that's why I share this with you, because I learned something from this build, and I'm excited to share it with you. So looking forward to 2021, uh, like I said, I do have a Mustang update coming for you shortly. And until next time, continue to enjoy possible floating works of art.